Well, she's supposed to be coming. <laughs> I need lots of help, so y'all help me out. be seated. We want to welcome you this morning. It's great to be in the house of the Lord right here at Pleasant Hill with each and every one of you. Thank you for being a part of our worship this morning and for just being the people of God. We love you and thank the Lord what he's doing within each and every one of your hearts and lives um, in this past week and look forward to the week to come. We do want to say a special thank you to all of you that went to uh, uh, downtown Florence yesterday morning and served uh, in the uh, soup kitchen there at uh, First Presbyterian. Thank you so much for your service and your faithfulness. Those of you that gave, we really appreciate your giving towards that. Uh, you covered all of the needs uh, that were had there uh, yesterday morning, and so we really appreciate you ministering to those that uh, needed just a little extra encouragement uh, here within our community. Thank you again for being the people of God. We'll be doing this again uh, from time to time, and so uh, there'll be future opportunities for you to go and uh, to serve in our community in this and various other ways. So thank you for that. Uh, also, if you'll notice in your bulletins, there's an announcement there that uh, for those that are interested uh, in being a part of a woman's pre or women's precept Bible study. This is sort of an inductive Bible study. It's for those that really want to dig in to next level to understand God's word and to, to have the, the tools to grasp it for yourself. Uh, we're going to have the opportunity to host that here at Pleasant Hill, and uh, it, it'll be open to ladies in our area, uh, but uh, it'll be your ministry. And so if you're interested in being a part of that, uh, if you would, please see Miss Julie uh, or let me know or contact the church office, if, ladies, if you're interested in being part of a, of a women's uh, area precept Bible study hosted right here at Pleasant Hill. Then also notice uh, we are preparing for, at the end of March, for a yard sale. So uh, you know how the song goes, give your best to the master, right? Amen? So uh, don't bring the old junk. Uh, if you don't want it, they don't either. So, <laughs> but again, we do invite you to participate and to be a part of that if, if the Lord lays that on your heart. Again, we want to thank you for, for being with us today here in the house of the Lord. And we are excited about what God's doing in our families, in our homes, in our church, 
and in our community. And we're just saying more, Lord. More, Lord. We're looking forward to what God has in store. Uh, we're going to take just a moment, and, uh, um, or as long as the Lord leads, and uh, have a time of prayer and, and to give our hearts and minds to the Lord to, to call out and to cry out to Him those things that are on our hearts and also to hear from heaven. And so today, if you have any special prayer needs, uh, uh, you have this opportunity just to very quickly voice those needs. Any prayer requests this morning? Okay. All right, any others? I'm telling you what. Uh, he didn't recognize me. <laughs> I wondered who, uh, Miss Mary, that stranger was. Um, we thought we had sentinels posted at the doors, but yet here she is. So we love you. Thank the Lord for you. And uh, we're so glad you're here with us today. So, so glad. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we, Lord, we long for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for ministering to us in so many ways. In our lives this week lord we thank you for that extra measure of strength just to push through we thank you for that provision lord that you gave that was just in time lord we thank you for that hand that you placed upon our lives and in that moment where we didn't even recognize you were there in which you protected us and you guided us and for that we give you praise Lord, we thank you for all those things that we have so often taken for granted that you give us in our lives. Lord, those things that provide us encouragement and, and comfort. And Lord, those things that strengthen us and inspire us. We thank you for that. And Lord, we thank you for those people that you've placed near us. Lord, those family members, those friends, those co-workers, those fellow students. Lord, those that you have placed around us in our life, both to minister to us. And Lord, for those that you've given us to serve, we thank you for their presence around us and we pray your blessing upon them. Father, now we ask that you would guide us in this church. Lead us, Lord, to increasingly be your people, to know the joy of your presence, to know the fellowship of your Holy Spirit, to experience the power of your word made real in each of us. So that we can, Lord, give you glory in you alone. We give you praise today. Now, Lord, we ask, Lord, for those things in which we cannot do. That you would place your hand, Lord, upon the sick. That you would bring comfort, Lord, to those that are mourning, that are suffering. Lord, that you would be, bring peace to those that are in turmoil. And, Heavenly Father, you would bring salvation to those who even yet walk in darkness. Lord, we ask that you, would, that you would stop by, that you would dwell in our presence, and that we could know the power and the joy of your fellowship. Now, Father, I pray that you would guide us in our hearts, teach us in our minds, as we pray these words in the manner in which Christ has taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Again, we're so glad to be in the house of the Lord. The Lord is real within us, amen? Do you know the joy of the presence of the Lord in your life? Amen?
Amen. Well, let's stand up and let's give God glory as we give him praise. Oh, 
Amen. We're so glad you're here this morning, and uh, it's a joy to, to come into the... Amen. I just want to thank you for your faithfulness, most of all to Jesus. I'm just... Uh, we, we, you know, we stand in a time... Um, I'm uh, reminded, I believe it was in the Gospel of John chapter, chapter 9, and it tells a story of when this man just... Uh, he, he, he was in the need of, of God's touch in his life, and it says that Jesus... Passed by. Jesus passed by. You know, we, we are living right now in a time, and, and it's literally happening in communities and places around the globe where in some special way, and I can't necessarily explain it, but God's on the move and he's passing by, amen? He's passing by, and, and there's opportunity, there's seasons in which, uh, for whatever reason, it's, un, it's not always known, but God is on the move. And I don't know about you, I don't want to miss it, amen? I don't want to miss the opportunity when the Lord passes by. And so I hope and pray that the Word of God is present in your life, it's present in your home, and, and that prayer is present in your home, and the name of Jesus is being lifted up in your home and the places that you go. And let's not miss it, amen? God is doing something special in this season. And it's not isolated to one place. And I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. This morning as we look to God's word, we've been talking just or at least started the conversation considering the war that's within. We're reminded that today we don't fight against flesh and blood. Amen. But our enemy is in powerful places and positions and there's an enemy to our soul that we need to recognize. We don't need to fear, but we need to recognize and we need to understand. And so we're, we're engaged in a war, and let's be honest, there's a war within. There's a war within. Between this old fleshly body and, and this, that, that's trying to hang on to itself, and the spirit that was in us, that is within us, that for those who are in Christ, belong to Him. There's that war that rages. But do you not know that He who is in the world has overcome the world, Amen. His name is Jesus, and he has declared for you and for me that when we are in him, we are overcomers too. He set it up so that we can win, and I don't want to lose. I want to win with Jesus, and I want to see Jesus win in our homes, in our hearts, in our community, and I know that he can. I want to invite you back into 2 Peter and chapter 1 to verse 16. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16. And so as we're considering and be reminded of the reality that God has invited us to partake in his divine nature. And he has given us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. He takes us a step farther. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16. The word of God declares, for we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed. Which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first. That no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Thankful for God's word uh, to us today. <clears throat> Remember 
the baptism of Jesus Christ. And this story points back to that moment when Christ surrendered himself and, and called upon John to baptize him. And, and in that passage where, where he did that, we're reminded that the heavens opened and a voice came from heaven. Behold, my son, in whom I'm well pleased. And he refers us back to that moment. He also refers us back to the moment in which Jesus was there with the disciples. And he went up a little farther on the mountaintop to pray. And it says that they heard the voice from heaven and it was a testimony to them and it's important to see and to notice in this particular passage as they say that that we don't follow any any storylines or any tall tales that are being told but that they were eyewitnesses of his majesty these are first-hand accounts that we are reading it declares that then and in the whole of scripture that's part of the canon or the collection of these holy writings. It's understood that these were first-hand accounts throughout the Word of God. And that gives it credibility. No clever tales, but eyewitness accounts. And so in this we see that the prophetic Word of God is confirmed. And I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that I can trust that the Word of God is true. There are a lot of things that are happening around us today. But if any human man or woman takes credit for them, they're not of God. They're not of God. But when God moves, if we know his word, we can see it and we can know it. We can know it. And so the prophecy of God's word is confirmed because eventually at some point, at some place, in some time, something happens happens and I don't want to miss it so how do we not miss it how do we not miss it just a couple things very quickly in this passage as we seek to win the war within there are a lot of storylines that are out there all around us today and people are trying to to win glory for themselves to take credit for things and and to elevate their ideas or thoughts or purposes or plans but when God's on the move I don't want to miss what he's up to amen I don't want to miss what he's doing and so there's some things that we can look to regarding God's Holy Word, because God's Word is true. God's Word is true. And so the first thing that we see in this is that, that experience builds confidence in the Word of God. Experience builds confidence in the Word of God. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables, they said, when we made known to you the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of His majesty. Eyewitnesses. Of his majesty. You have two things present here. One you have God's word. That declares. That declares from the Holy Spirit. What God is about. And what he's doing. And then two you have experience. That goes with it. Experience that goes with it. We need both. Amen. We have lots of experiences. And sometimes I can't explain them. Sometimes I can't explain them. And without God's word, if God's on the move, we might miss it. We might misinterpret it. We might misunderstand what God is doing. And so what they're teaching us here, these, as Peter is writing to us, he's, he's being mindful of the fact and he is looking back to times of old that the prophecy of God is being fulfilled. But how do you know that except you have in your heart and in your mind the word of God. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you because I love you. Make sure that God's word is a part of your life. We are a people that live in a place and a time where we have the freedom, the liberty, the opportunity to explore God's word even for ourselves. Some of you know even very well you've been to those places. There are people in places and parts of the world today that do not have that liberty. And so it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to make sure that we are searching out God's word. So that when God comes, we can declare that God's on the scene. Amen. 
And so we need to have God's word as a part of our life because it does something else for us. God's word enlightens us for a coming day. It prepares our hearts and our minds. As we have discussions with individuals and, and with people in our lives, there's many times where people just don't understand what we're talking about. And I'm telling you as the people of God, it is you and you alone that can hear from heaven that God's Holy Spirit can declare to you His Holy Word and to help you see. Because it's the Spirit of God that guides us into all truth you see. And so, as we see in this passage, God's Word enlightens us for a coming day. It's God's Holy Word that we hear from. And so we see in this, in this passage, we have the prophetic word confirmed to you, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place. We live in a day and a time where this world and our communities are in darkness or in depression. And it's the word of God that brings hope and brings light. Just yesterday, I had the, uh, the, the wonderful opportunity to be a, an evangelist at a, at, a, at a teen or a youth event in the Huntsville area and had opportunity to share with them. And I kind of polled the crowd just a little bit there for a moment and, and asked, them, uh, asked, asked of them, how many of you are excited about tomorrow or excited about what tomorrow holds? And it was less than 20% of them. We live in a day and a time where our nation is in despair, is in darkness, and is in depression. And you are the light of glory because Jesus is in you. We must have God's word so that we can shine the light in dark places. God's word enlightens us for a coming day. My friends, God is on the move. And if we do not have God's word planted in our hearts that keeps us on the path that is straight, we will miss it when Jesus passes by. Because God's word, it prepares us for Christ's coming. You see in that same verse where he declares that the light shines in darkness until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts. If you don't want to miss the day, you need to allow God's word to be implanted within your experience. In the Old Testament in 2 Kings in chapter 22. We're going to briefly look at this passage. In 2 Kings chapter 22. God had moved on this very youthful king, Josiah, and it starts out as king, as his reign started out, he was just eight years old. And God had planted in his heart and mind to follow after, if you would, um, to, to follow after his, his father David and, and bringing in and restoring worship. To the kingdom of Israel which had been lost. And the temple was in ruins and disrepair and broken down. And because the people had lost their passion for God. And he was restoring worship in the place. And this is what we find in 2 Kings chapter 22 and verse 1. It says, Josiah was 8 years old when he became king. And he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedidiah. And, his, and the daughter of Adiah the uh, Bosketh. And he did what was right, the Bible says, in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left hand. Now, I don't doubt at all at eight years of age that there was some godly counsel in his life. Amen. Someone had told him about God and was counseling him in that direction. And so in doing so, he was taught and reminded of the ways of his father David. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and did not turn aside to the right hand or the left hand. And I'm telling you, in this day of darkness, of this day of moral darkness and national depression that seems to be engulfing us and is all about us and, and has people fearful of what lies ahead tomorrow in a time such as this, we need to be doing what's right in the sight of the Lord and following this holy word. We live in a country that's allowing the onslaught and the murder of innocent children even in the mother's womb. My friends, this is not a political thing. 
It's a spiritual issue. Because the word of God declares that he knows us even in our mother's womb. He forms us there according to God's word. And God warns us. God warns us of what will happen if we harm the least of these. You see, I'm telling you, be careful of affiliating yourself with any political parties in this day and time. And I want to talk to you very straightly and carefully here. Your first obligation is to Jesus Christ. If you follow Jesus, I'm going to tell you, the liberals on the left are going to call you right wing, and the conservatives on the right are going to call you left wing. If you follow Jesus. Notice what the passage says right here. He did not turn aside to the right or the left hand. He followed after the Lord Jesus. Don't get caught in the trap. Look. I know that there are people that are doing great things and are seeking with hearts and and minds that have the purpose of doing great things for our country and for our community. I don't care what political party or who they're associated with. But as for me and my house, we will follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And if it lines up with some of those, fantastic. If it doesn't, so be it. We live in a day and time where we need to worship the Lord and trust Him for our salvation and not some government that's broken in every way. Now maybe I'm meddling a little bit, but God's Word is true. And so as we look at at this passage in 2 Kings, it says, Now it came to pass, in verse 3, In the 18th year of King Josiah the king sent Shaphan Shaphan the the scribe, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Hilkiah the high priest, that he may count the money which has been brought into the house of the Lord, which the doorkeepers have gathered from the people, and let them deliver it into the hands of those doing the work, who are the overseers of the house of the Lord. Let them give it to those who are in the house of the Lord, doing the work to repair the damages to the house. And so again, he's putting in the hearts and the minds of the people. He says, look, go and and report to the high priest. Give him an account of the resources available and put them in place. So that's what we're passionate about so that we can restore worship in the house of the Lord. You can look at a people of God and see where they're placing their time and their resources and see their heart. We want to be a people that honors God. In verse 8, skipping down, it says, Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found a book. I found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. I want you to think about this for just a moment. I have found a book. I'm not sure how all that came to be as the workers were moving things here and about, dusting things off, cleaning things off, repairing structure, putting things in their rightful place, restoring order in the worship of the house of God. I'm not so, I'm not sure of who called out the cry and say, hey, what's this, you know? And and finally, the the priest that was there identified it as the word of God, but they found the book. We live in a land that's departed from the book. And if we don't restore worship in the house of the Lord and find the book, who will? Who will? We must find the book. And so the Bible goes on in verse 9. It says, Shaphan the scribe went to the king. Bringing the king the word. Bringing the king the word. Verse 10, Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest, 
has given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And listen to verse 11. Now it happened when the king heard the words of the book of the law that he tore his clothes. He tore those fine kingly garments. It's one thing that is true when the word of God is declared, the book is remembered, the book is found, the book is read, and it is spoken out that people will turn to God when God walks by. I'm telling you, when the presence of God comes into a people, one of the things that it does, it declares the glory and the holiness of God, and it also shows us how much we need Him. Amen? It declares to us the needs of our heart, the state of our heart. And we recognize that we are in need of Jesus Christ. We're in need of restoration. We're in need of cleaning up. For do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? You and me, we are the ones that God is coming to restore, to put back together, to put things in place in the rightful order so that we can worship Him and be a light for the glory of God for all the world to see. We must find the book. Every time revival comes, there's always an earnest confession, you see. And a mourning and a weeping as we understand our need for the Lord. And praise be to God, there's forgiveness to be received and forgiveness to be given. As God restores worship in the land. Just a little bit more. In verse 12, the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and Ahikam the son of Shaphan and Achbor the son of Micaiah and Shaphan the scribe and Azaliah the servant of the king saying this, Go inquire of the Lord for me. See, God's word always points us to him. Go and inquire of the Lord for me, for the people, and for all of Judah concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is aroused against us. Why? Because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book to do all that is written concerning them. We have enjoyed in our short history as a country the blessing of God. There is time after time after time through our history, although there's been ups and downs, there's been places where we have done great atrocities, but there's also been great blessing and great reward in this country as we have sought to organize ourselves based upon the principles of God but as we have torn those out of the fabric of our community and our society and removed the principles of God to be far from it we are losing the blessing of God and that's when I that's why when I speak to a group of teenagers that may think they know it all and probably don't know that much sometimes They speak greater wisdom than we sometimes use. Because they fear tomorrow. Why do they fear tomorrow? Because the fathers have not obeyed the words of the book. You see. Thus says the Lord God of Israel concerning the words you've heard. Verse 19. Because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before the Lord. There's hope. There's hope. When you heard what I spoke against this place, against its inhabitants, that they would become a desolation and a curse, you tore your clothes, you wept before me. I also have heard you, says the Lord. Surely, therefore, I will gather you to your fathers. You shall be gathered to your grave in peace, and your eyes shall not see all the calamity which I will bring on this place. So they brought back the word to the king. Now listen to chapter 23, these, these first three verses. Now the king sent them to gather all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem to him. This is important. He's bringing all the leaders together. The king went up to the house of the Lord. 
With all the men of Judah. See they remembered worship in the land. They went to the house of the Lord. And all the men of Judah with him. And all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The priests and the prophets. And all the people. Both small and great. Everyone was invited to come to the house of worship. And he read in their hearing. All the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the house of the Lord. Now, here, verse 3 of chapter 23. Then the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord, to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart, with all his soul, to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. And all the people took a stand for the covenant. My friends, we need leadership that will stand upon the truth and the principles of the Word of God. And I'm telling you right now, the leadership in our nation is an appropriate reflection of the people who put them there. And it's not going to change up there until it changes here. We must be people of God's book. They found the book. Repentance came. They found the book. And the nation was returned to worship. It's not a thing to be missed in this passage. In that verse 3 when he says those words. With all his heart, with all his soul. He was referring back to the Shema. That prayer of the Hebrew people. That was prayed in blessing upon their kids. On the lying down and the rising up. It filled their home. Those words. Hear O Israel the Lord your God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God. With all your heart. With all your soul. With all your might. And these words that I command you. Today shall be on your heart. And it goes on from there. As they pray that blessing over their kids. I didn't ask for permission for this, so I may get in trouble, but one of the most beautiful things that I get to hear every evening is Julie going in as he goes to sleep and praying over little Caleb. She goes in there every single night, she doesn't miss it, and lays her hand on Caleb and, and prays for him. He goes to bed hearing Jesus. Now, Julie's a night person. I'm not. So I'm a morning person. So every morning, I don't leave the house. I don't leave home and go to work or wherever I have to go without laying that hand on Caleb and praying over him the name of Jesus. That God would bless him that day. That God would help him to honor the Lord Jesus and to honor his family. And that God would protect him and would teach him and train his mind so that he could be that great young man that God's called him to be. Every child needs to receive that. Every child needs to receive that. It's the name of Jesus in your home. It's the word being declared on your family. I don't want to miss it when God passes by. Let me close with this. Some of you have been following the revival up at Wilmore, Kentucky. I know I've mentioned it some, but I want to tell you a little story that I've recently heard from it. Um, And I don't know if this is one of those revivals like it's happened in the past that's going to change the landscape. It's happened before it could. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Only time will tell that. If there's lasting change brought in to the hearts and lives of communities, if it grows from there, makes a difference. But after an average chapel, the way it started, as an average chapel, even the one who preached that chapel said it wasn't the best. (laughs) There were some 19 students that didn't leave. For whatever reason, there was something about it. And just the other day, one of them gave testimony Uh, to the crowds that are still gathering. And those 19 students uh, stayed behind because they just wanted more. They wanted something more. And they needed more. So so they held back. And and during the testimony, one of them, a young lady named Sarah, 
Um, she was one of the 19. She was invited just the other day to the podium to give her testimony. And she said she was there at the end of that chapel. She was sitting and, and she was thinking, I know that I have class, and, but I'm, I'm just going to stay here for a while. And she was sitting at the end of the row, and students were getting up to leave the chapel, and she didn't want to be in the way. And so she took the initiative. She just went on and got up and went to a place where there wasn't anyone that was going to walk past her. They were in pews very similar to these. And so she moved out of the way, and, and she sat back down. And she says, as I sat back down, it just feels different for me in here. She said, you could tell that something was happening. She said, everyone leaves and I look around and a couple of my friends are, are still there in the room. And she said, I just feel that something's happening. And just previously she had attended an annual, what they call a set-apart retreat, she said. And, and another Another lady was there and was speaking and the th God had just implanted a few words from that lady in her heart and her mind at that little annual retreat that, where she said that Jesus gives us abundantly more. Jesus gives us abundantly more. And she said, I can't explain it, but it stuck. She said, I knew something was going on and I really, I didn't know what to do and she said, I, I, the place felt different, but I was just unsure, she said. So I, I did the only thing I knew. She said, I opened my Bible. And she opened to Psalm 31, 19. Here's that verse. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all. And on those who take refuge in you. How abundant are the good things. She was so overwhelmed in that moment that she knew that abundance was going to happen somehow. And she didn't understand it. And she said every time from that moment on that she looked up, more people were rushing back into the chapel. People were coming from everywhere back into the chapel. My friends, she remembered God's word. And she experienced God's abundance. And it's still going on today. I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. Remember God's word. And allow his spirit to restore a passion for the Lord Jesus Christ within your heart. The kind of passion that won't allow your lips to stay shut. That you must declare his name from the youngest to the oldest. May God restore his covenant with us as we follow his word. As we follow his holy word. God's word is true. It will help us to see him. Jesus is passing by. I don't want to miss it. How's your heart? I don't want to miss it. Would you stand with me as we, as we close this time in prayer? But I hope this isn't the closing of your worship today. And, and I want to invite you this morning, if you just don't know the joy of being in fellowship with Jesus Christ in your life, if you've not accepted the forgiveness that he has for you that every single one of us need and must experience to know the kingdom of God, I invite you, don't leave this place today until you know the joy of the Lord by confessing the name of Jesus, that he is the resurrected son of God, that we have sinned before him, but praise God through his cross, we can be forgiven of that grace, restored to fellowship with him, and hope forevermore don't leave this place unless you know Jesus Christ is both the Savior of your soul and the Lord of your life because he loves you and he can get you excited about what's coming tomorrow you don't have to fear it in Jesus because he knows it and he'll be there before you respond to the Lord as he leads you today
Thank you, Jesus, that you restore and reconcile all things. Help us to regrasp and rediscover the power of your word. And may it be declared in our hearts, in our homes, and in our community. So the name of Jesus be lifted high. And men and women and boys and girls can know the joy of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Go be a blessing.